Well, this is insane. So AJ Brown finally broke his media silence and he went off. As he explained the reason for his frustration, he called out one particular media member and he also defended Nick Sirianni and the coaching staff in a crazy interview. Plus, Eagles second year defensive tackle Jordan Davis was absolutely ripped to shreds by an NFL analyst for being out of shape and giving zero effort on plays. So is this valid? Also, Darius Slay gave a promising update on his injury status while Jason Kelsey sounded off on the Eagles struggles. But despite those struggles, it seems like head coach Nick Sirianni's job is still safe according to this NFL insider. So we're going to talk about all that and more news in this video today, so let's not waste any time and get straight into it. Now, despite all the negatives going on with this Eagles team recently, we did just get a positive update regarding Darius Slay, as of course, he's been out for a few games now after getting knee surgery, but it sounds like he could be returning soon. As Darius Slay himself came out recently on his podcast and said that his knee is doing, quote, very, very well, and that he's been getting back into workouts now that all the stitches are out. He also says he's, quote, looking forward to getting back out there as soon as possible, and also he said, quote, I'm almost there. Eagles fans, you ain't gotta wait too much longer. So he didn't reveal exactly when it'll be back, whether it'll be this final game of the regular season versus the Giants or in the first game of the playoffs, but definitely a positive update there on Slay's knee. And then Nick Sirianni got the chance to speak on it today, and he said that he expects Slay to be good to go for this final regular season finale, along with Zach Cunningham, and also kind of surprisingly, Devontae Smith. So that's really good to hear. But even if they all can't go this Sunday, Sirianni's comments bode really well for them being ready for the playoffs. So hopefully all those guys, including Slay, come back better than ever because the Eagles are going to need all the help they can get right now in the midst of losing four of their last five games and not playing good football in any of them and they got to somehow find a way to bounce back and rally behind their vet leaders in Jason Kelsey and speaking of Kelsey he had his weekly appearance on WIP radio and he spoke on the Eagles recent skid and the current frustration in the locker room among other things I mean obviously everybody's frustrated and pissed off with how the last few weeks have gone um you know what you know, I've been through losing season before, winning season. I think the one that makes this one so frustrating is the fact that I think, you know, the expectations and, you know, where we saw ourselves being, even at the midpoint of the season, was, was in a much different sp space than where we're at right now. And, you know, we're we're just not, we're not executing and playing with a good football team right now. I think at, at times, both sides of the ball, I've been playing well throughout the season, um, but, you know, it's been a frustrating last, you know, month, five weeks, however long it's been. Um, you know, the last five games really have not gone, um, you know, the way we, you know, wanted to go. You know, it's not, you know, we, we, you know, we obviously had a great start to the season, but um, we're not executing well across the board uh, offensively a better day from a production standpoint and you know, i think we, we did some good things but you know don't get done at the end of the game which is you know the most crucial part of it and you know i think that that's stuff that we did earlier in the season a little bit better you know we, we, we handled the end of these games we operated in crucial situations as a team um and you know just haven't done that recently um, and then two out of these last three games. So he did make a really good point there at the end, saying that in their recent skid, the Eagles' late game execution has not been on point with where it was earlier in the season. And that's true, I think. Although I think there were still definitely issues late in games earlier in the year, the Eagles handled those situations a lot better than they have in this recent stretch. And that's surely one of the many things that the Eagles have to focus on. But that's just it. That's really only one of many, many, many issues that this team is dealing with right now. And I think the one that most people are talking about is clearly coaching, which is very valid. I think we've talked about it enough over the the past few weeks to know that the coaching is the main issue with this Eagles team right now, and in turn, a lot of the fan base's criticism has been aimed at head coach Nick Sirianni. I mean, you have a large portion of the fan base saying that he should be fired after this season because there's speculation that he's lost the locker room at this point. And it's become obvious that the fans just aren't confident in Nick Sirianni anymore after the offensive struggles that the Birds have had this year and the clear flaws with the scheme. However, despite the opinions of the fan base and their recent struggles, it seems like Nick Sirianni's job is safe for now. At least according to NFL insider Adam Schefter, as he went on 97.5 The Fanatic and spoke on the speculation surrounding Sirianni's job, saying, quote, They've gone to the playoffs in three of three years. You're not firing a coach that has gone to the playoffs every year he's coached that team. And then this Twitter user Patrick went on to further back Sirianni, saying, quote, Fact 1. Sirianni's .68 win percentage is first among active NFL coaches and second all-time behind only George Hallis, .682. Fact 2. The Eagles are the first team in almost three decades following a Super Bowl trip. You don't fire a coach that successful because of five bad games. 
And really, that's exactly what I've personally been trying to say this whole time. Because I feel like sometimes as fans, we end up as prisoners of the moment, but we have to look at the whole body of work. And Sirianni's whole body of work has been really, really good, and he's been really successful. I mean, he just went to the Super Bowl last season for crying out loud. So this is why I'm saying that I don't think that they should fire or will fire Nick Sirianni after this year. I think that'd just be an overreaction to an albeit really bad stretch, where to be fair, Sirianni just hasn't been good enough. But still, I think they just need to completely rebuild the staff around him, besides Jeff Stoutland, of course, and hopefully that should solve it. Now, if we're coming to the end of next season and Sirianni still isn't getting the job done, then we can have a different conversation. But right now, according to Schefter, Sirianni's job is safe. So what do you guys think about that? Are you thinking that it's only fair for Nick to get another year like me, or are you still on the fire Nick Sirianni train? Now, moving on here, another Eagle has been under criticism recently, and it's kind of surprising as the guy in question is defensive tackle Jordan Davis, as NFL analyst Brian Baldinger absolutely ripped into the second year man, calling him out of shape and also questioning his effort. Jordan Davis is out of shape. Like, I don't know what they find him, Zach. You're in there every day. Like, I don't know what they find him every week, but I, I got to believe he's getting money taken from him. He's overweight, and it shows. Like, he's not pursuing the football. He's nothing in the pass rush. So that's one. So if he's going to play with that effort and be overweight like that, then you say, okay, well, they're a man short in the rotation. Fletcher's playing too much. Jalen's – because he's not effective right now. They need another guy inside in their defensive tackle rotation. Um <clears throat> I'm not sure why he keeps dressing. He's not. He's been ineffective. Wow. When the, the plays are going on, he is basically walking on the field. You know, it's just... It's bad effort. Now, on one hand, I gotta imagine there is some truth to this because Baldy is usually trustworthy and he does watch a lot of film and does a lot of film breakdowns, so I'm sure he would see it if there is a lack of effort or if he is out of shape. But on the other hand, I feel like it's kind of hard for me to question Davis's effort because, I mean, we saw him chase down Josh Allen after playing a career high in snaps against the Bills in overtime, and I just feel like it's more about him not quite being accustomed to playing a full NFL season given that he was hurt in his rookie year and not playing a lot of snaps when he was healthy. I mean, sure, maybe he could have been in better shape, but from what it sounds like, he really works hard at his conditioning. So I think we should just cut him some slack. I really don't think it's a question of effort. I think maybe he's just not used to playing this long. That being said, it would still definitely be nice to see him still playing well this late into the year, and the Eagles could really use it. So I don't know. I'm going to leave this one up to you guys. Does JD deserve this criticism or not? And now lastly, I want to get to what everybody has been anticipating for over a week now, which is AJ Brown finally breaking his media silence as he announced on Tuesday night that he would speak to the media on Wednesday. And now that media availability has came and went and it definitely didn't disappoint. I mean, he said so much in just this short media availability, starting with explaining why he wasn't talking to the media in the first place. Honestly, uh, the reason why uh, I didn't uh, speak to the media after the game because, uh, you know, I didn't want to be negative, you know. You know, I, 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 I had already transitioned to the mindset where uh, we were going through a tough time, like, like I said, after the game. I said I was raised. If I had nothing nice to say, I'm not going to say nothing at all. So I'm not just about to continue to compound a negative with negative. So you guys can write more negative stuff. Like, you guys watch the game too. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you guys already know. So that's why I was like, there's nothing more that I can say. You know, just to, I'm not trying to make it worse than what it is. And so, you know, and then on top of that, you know, everything that I do, if I say something, I do anything, I'm, I'm, I'm classified as a monster, you know, honestly. You know, and, it, and it's, and it's, Honestly, the, the, the opposite, you know? You saw my frustration on the field. It wasn't about the play call. It wasn't about none of that. It was about my guy getting banged up. And we're gonna need, I'm gonna need Smitty moving forward. You know? So I absolutely love everything that AJ Brown said there. I mean, like he said earlier, he just didn't have anything nice to say, so he just didn't say it. And also, he's right about being classified as a monster no matter what he says or does. I mean, the media really just twists everything around to make AJ Brown seem like a locker room cancer, when really, he's one of the best leaders that they have. But still, you have people like Marcus Hayes writing articles saying that AJ Brown is tearing the locker room apart when it's just not true. I mean, Jordan Mailata spoke on that yesterday saying, quote, all this talk about AJ not being a leader, you guys don't know him like we do. He's a great leader. I mean, I don't know why the media seems to have this agenda against AJ Brown, but it just feels like every little thing he does is put under a microscope. And I think for Marcus Hayes specifically, everyone knows that he's a liar. And that's why it was so great to hear AJ actually call him out during his presser. Treat whatever narrative and like, like I'm splitting the locker room and all this. That's so uh, and, and honestly, I'm kind of glad. Uh, what's the name? What's the reporter name? Who? The, Mark, I'm, I'm kind of glad he, he's not here because I was going to ask him because I wanted to, I want to know like, Who's saying that? Because I know my teammates are around for me. They, they, and I'm around for them. And so, and I got their back. So.
So you gotta love that from AJ. I mean, we all know that it's BS what Hayes and other media members try to do to him. They just really try to demonize him for no reason, when in reality, he's just a guy who wears his heart on his sleeve and really cares about winning, and I really respect that. And I also really respect him taking 100% full accountability for a lot of the Eagles' issues, and also, instead of blaming the coaching staff like a lot of people kind of expected him to do, he went out of his way to defend them. Because, of course, all the reports recently are that AJ is frustrated with the coaching staff, and that's why he wasn't speaking to the media. And I actually talked about these reports, and I personally did believe that aspect of it, but I guess I was wrong because AJ himself denied that, specifically going out of his way to defend Nick Sirianni and Brian Johnson while saying all the issues are 100% the player's fault. There may be things that Nick probably want to fix about himself, and, and, and I'll say, but one thing I can't respect, loyalty is not one of them. And I say that because um, he takes up for us when it has nothing to do with him. And just like Brian, he get the, end, the wrong end of the stick sometimes when it be us. But I, like I said today, the coaches play, play zero snaps this year. It is not the coach. It is us. And so, like I said, if one person goes the wrong way, the whole play is over with. And, and as you guys see, it is glimpse. It is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is highs and lows. It goes just like this. And so that's why I feel like, that's why, honestly, I feel like we are close. We are close to, to continue to continue to get better and continue to, to, to take that next step. You know, with all this freaking adversity, we, we right there. That's what happens when you're trying to get to the next step. Gravity pulls against you. Everything pulls against you. And I think that's what this team is going through right now. And I think once we fight through that, push through that, we're going to be fine. We're going to be right where we need to be. Because I know we got great people in this locker room. <laughs> I'm not mad at Nick. I don't, I'm not mad at nobody. Like, like we have a great relationship. Like I said, like, I, I got a ton of respect for, for Nick. Because like I said, he take off for us when, when it be us, you know? And... I even said, for the, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get detail. For example, I know that's what y'all want anyway, but I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get detail. Uh, like for the Seattle game, that was on us. Like we we messed that up. We 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 improvised and we went on our own. And Nick came out and said, "Oh, I I, I wanted uh, to try to get a flag or something, something crazy like that." It's like he really made himself look like look look like a, a fool for us. I have nothing but respect for him. Like you know what I'm saying? Because not all coaches do that. You know what I'm saying? So like. Bro, bro, we rhyme with Nick. We rhyme with Brian. We just got to come out. We just got to play ball. That's all it is. It is either one person messing up or something like that. And I'm not saying that somebody just trying to mess up, but it happens. We human. You know what I'm saying? So, like, but like I said, it's highs and lows, and you see the glimpses. So that's why I'm like, but we right there. We right there. Despite everything, despite everybody saying this and saying that like we right there and, and and we know we are and that's the only thing that matters that we know so again you gotta really really respect aj for doing that i mean he didn't place blame he didn't point the finger at the coaches which i think again some people may have been expecting him to do a little bit he instead did the complete opposite i mean he stuck his neck out for the coaches saying that he's still riding with them and he talked about nick sirianni specifically saying that nick takes accountability for things that aren't even his fault and makes himself look like a fool just to protect the players so to me it sounds like aj really still believes in nick it sounds like their personal relationship relationship is at a good spot and he also said that he really respects him and also I doubt you would have AJ come out and say something like this if Nick had lost the locker room like a lot of people are saying and for AJ again I just want to keep reiterating this you got to give him a huge amount of respect for saying everything that he did I mean I don't think I've ever heard a player press conference quite like this AJ said so much but he said everything right I mean whether it was detailing how he apologized to his teammates for creating a distraction by not talking to the media or explaining the reason for his frustration at the end of the Arizona game was because Devontae Smith got hurt not because of the play call or also him sticking up for the coaching staff in a big way or calling out the media for the BS or reiterating that he feels the Eagles offense is still right there they just got to execute a little bit better and they'll get the job done I mean everything that he said was said so well and I think it just goes to show you that anybody questioning AJ Brown's character needs to rethink things a little bit I mean there is no way you can convince me that this is a guy who's a diva I just think he's a phenomenal leader that wears his heart on his sleeve and that really cares about winning football games so Philly's got your back AJ we believe in you and we completely 100% respect you. But still, despite what AJ said, whether we as a fan base fully believe in the coaches or that this team can bounce back and somehow go on a run, that might be a different story, but I guess we'll see. I mean, the season isn't over. I'm not really confident, but I'm not going to stop supporting this team. So let's just hope we can put a run together. And if they're going to do that, it starts this week versus the Giants. So I'll be covering all the news leading into that matchup and also just throughout the rest of this season and into the off season. So if you don't want to miss any of that, make sure you subscribe and also really importantly, turn on notifications so you don't miss any Eagles updates just like this. Also drop a like down on this video if you did enjoy it. And also leave a comment down below just regarding anything that I talked about in this video. And if you want to watch another video talking about how Jordan Mailata defended Nick Sirianni, you can go check this out right here. 
year. Now, with all that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this one, guys. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.